in the tech space, there are a ton of YouTubers, but there's this really small one which I like called MKBHD. You might have seen him around, he really puts a lot of work into his videos. Anyway, every year he does this phone awards video, and I thought it would be cool if we watched it together. So go watch his video and then come back to watch it with me. Cool? Cool. But first, a sponsor break. It's me. I'm the sponsor. Subscribe. Do it now. Now, I haven't watched the video yet, I'm going in blind, but I did watch last year's video to make my picks and I have some notes here. Let's go. Hi Marquez. Alright, welcome to the Smartphone Awards 2023. A lot of smartphones come out every year. We got all kinds of shapes a ton of phones. and sizes. Damn and features and budgets, just a ton of phones. And these are my picks. I always know I'm gonna get some pushback on some of the categories. I'm sure I'll hear it in the comments. And I'm We're gonna make our picks. But these are my picks, so I'm sticking with them. And every single category, we've actually had custom trophies made to the give trophies to look great. the winners. And lately, they the companies do. that win these actually do request them. So without any further ado, let's get started with our first category, best big smartphone. Okay, best big phone. There are a ton of great big slab phones. I mean, you have the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the S23 Ultra, but if you really want a good big phone, you probably want to go for a foldable. And there were a ton of good ones this year. You had a ton of big brands jumping onto the bandwagon. Google OnePlus joined the party, but Samsung is still the one to beat. They've been doing it for years and they're probably the one doing it the best. If you want a solid foldable, you want to go for a Galaxy Z Fold. That's probably my pick. So this is a fun one, just because, you know, smartphones have been growing over the years and they've started to get bigger and bigger. But at the Phones point where right now, these it days. does kind of feel like they've stopped growing. Am I the only one that feels this way? I feel like everyone sort of agreed that we're not going to go past seven inch screen size. Man, Everything I had a over that is ridiculous. Sony Xperia so Z1 all these compact. Big companies phones have are their so much giant bigger these best days. smartphones pushing right up against the seven inch screen size and trying to fit as much as possible in that phone. He might also and mention my the ROG phone. For the best that's big huge. phone, the best use of that space in 2023, that's going to the Samsung Galaxy S23 okay. Ultra. Once again, the phone he that comes out at the beginning phone. of the year. Kind of a sleeper, but it holds study the entire year. Feels kind of boring, but it does feel like that's a pretty clear pick for me for best big yeah, phone. Yeah, I agree. Of it's a great phone. Not so much then, to say. Next up category: best compact smartphone, best small phone, best small phone. I think we know where that's going. Asus, Sony, and Samsung are also good options, but Asus just killed it with the Zenfone 10. It has a ton of features crammed into a small form factor and for a pretty good price. It even has a headphone jack, not to mention the huge battery. Let's see what he says. This one, I swear the pickings get slimmer every single year because not only are smartphones getting bigger and bigger, but also even the smallest phones are getting further and further from small. The best small phone, you saw this coming already. It's the Asus Zenfone yeah. 10. <laughs> so next category, best camera. Okay, best camera in a phone. I think he has to go with the iPhone 15 Pro Max here. I mean, with the new 5x telephoto, it's still great at video, it has a great photo taking experience, it's quick to launch the camera, you don't have to wait for the pictures to process. And let's not forget the front facing camera, which is still way ahead of the competition. The S23 Ultra and the Pixel 8 Pro can get some better pictures in some conditions. I mean, they're all great camera phones, you can't go wrong with either of them, but the iPhone is just better overall in a smartphone in 2023. And this one I have a soft spot for just because I like cameras and you guys already knew that. But my pick for best camera for 2023, ruffles feathers every time for some reason, but I really believe in this one. You already know, it's the iPhone 15 Pro. Of course. Pro. This is my camera king and I have absolutely the no The Pro, not the Max. It. Now the simple fact that many people love to point out is, yes, there are some smartphones, even ones on this table that can produce better photos than the iPhone in certain situations, especially zoom. But when it comes to just the totality of performance across the biggest variety of situations and ease of use for photos and videos, 
the iPhone is still king, especially yeah. with video. I feel like it's still not particularly close. So the iPhone takes the best, most consistent, usable videos in the biggest variety of situations. The others have gotten better. By a long way. There was an Apple keynote earlier this year that turned out to be shot completely on the iPhone, and it looked incredible. I want to see shot on uh, Mac. But some of you may already remember, iPhone. and I've pointed this out that. That's not the first time that's happened already. Samsung years ago did a keynote that was live that was actually already shot. Oh man, and they that was the keynote with the, the Bixby smart speaker, uh, right? But you could tell, like it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as good. You really could tell. So next category, next winner is best value. I'm honestly not sure what to go for here. You could argue for the Pixel 8. It's more expensive than the 7 was last year, but you're getting seven years of OS updates. We don't really know what that will look like, but at face value, it's great. There's also the Pixel 7a, which now has a high refresh rate screen. And I know there were a couple of foldables that targeted the lower price. And the Zenfone 10, which was a great value for all it was packing. It's a tough choice, but I would give it to the Pixel 7a. It may not have the latest processor, but it has a great camera a great software experience and now has wireless charging which used to be a premium feature all for 500 euros you can't go wrong with that let's see what he picks sort of shifted over the years it used to be best budget phone but i sort of expanded it best value option here and this is actually i think the hardest one for me to pick believe it or not which okay, i think is a good thing it's and the a bad hardest thing. It's i a said good it's thing the because toughest. it means there's some competition in the suspicious. high value options he's reading but it's my also mind not that good of a thing just because a lot of phones have gotten price hikes this year there have been yeah, base phones prices are expensive going up these days. things that used to win you budget don't have awards those are more expensive killers now. anymore so i got to make that they decision kind of do on what from qualifies chinese brands as best value but after much deliberation i eventually landed on what feels like a sweet spot the phone can be found consistently for well under $400. It's the Samsung Galaxy okay. A54. It's everything you need. I didn't even and think of that. You don't. Yeah, it's a good phone, especially for the price. I mean, it's kind of boring. It's very similar to the ones before it, the A53, the A52S 5G, I think it was, but it's good. Can't go wrong with it. Cameras are fine. Battery, it's fine. The screen, it's fine. The design is fine. Everything is fine. So for everything's bucks, fine. You'll be just fine. But I'll also give a shout out Very to nice. the Pixel 7a. As you probably remember, the price went up this year all the way up to 500 bucks, uh, but it did gain some stuff. It has a 90 hertz display now, it has better specs, and it still does all the stuff that you expect from a Pixel. So it deserves a shout out for being a good. Yeah, I think the Galaxy A54 also has this stuff. It's different. You buy a Pixel for the software experience and the pretty great camera, right? But I can see why he picked the A54. Phone at that price. So then next up, best battery. Best battery. I know the Hoppo Find X6 Pro had a 100 watt wired charging and 50 watt wireless charging. So he might go for that but it doesn't really have any protective software features for the battery like I know Sony and Asus have. So I don't know, let's see what it picks. Best battery overall in a smartphone. This doesn't necessarily go to the one that just has the highest battery capacity. Ideally, you also have some decently fast charging or wireless charging, or it's just convenient that it lasts for so long. It might not actually be the biggest sell. Well, so, the ROG phone also winner, had a pretty big battery. He's got a trophy for best battery this year is Michael iPhone that. 15 plus. Damn, the iPhone. This thing just goes and goes okay, and that's goes. True. The bigger Might battery not be in the general has a lot battery, to do with it. The 60 yeah, hertz display it lasts also for a has a lot to do with it. But if you want a risk-free, no-brainer, great battery life, that's definitely, no battery life, that's definitely gonna get it done for you. I recently talked about this in my Hot Takes video about how phones are getting more and more powerful, but generally the average battery life hasn't really changed that much. It's just been all day is good. So it's good to see some phones actually pushing that envelope. All and day is great. To get I don't think I can so then, go for a full design. day without charging my phone. This, this one is... Okay, best design. Man, I just got to go for the Oppo Find X6 Pro. I mean, that letter back with the silver accents, it looked great. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he picks. He might so go for the Nothing Every phone time. too. Best design. If you're in my shoes, you got to give a design award, right? First of all, a lot of phones look pretty similar to the way they did the previous year, right? So I can't give it to one that looks exactly the same as last year. I'm really also, curious what it'll go for. I can't give it to one that has for. some fatal flaw. I can't give it to the one with the biggest notch 
or or a dynamic island can i the dynamic I island look, to the one okay it's made of plastic or the one that has a curved display plastic on the edge isn't like, that what is, bad what is an actual plastic gets a flawless? red rep maybe it's the most boring design but you don't want to give the design award to the most boring design this is a hard one and then it hit me there was a phone this year that basically made headlines just for its design and it absolutely deserves a trophy for design this year it's the honor magic v2 this thing right here it was like a gear mm. shift in the world of foldable okay. phones i think a lot of us didn't even realize that you could make a phone like this first of all it's under 10 millimeters thick okay, when it's, it's closed, it's which is the same thin. thickness as plenty of regular phones. I can see that. It has a full-size okay. screen on the outside. It but has I was a really expecting him to go for the Oppo Find X6 Pro. Will he mention it? That brings us to our first new category ad, and that is best New category. Phone. I wasn't ready for this. Best foldable. Mm. There were some really good entries into foldables this year. I mean, you had Google and Oppo coming into the scene, Techno, I think, did some cheaper devices, but they were great too. And I mean, the flip style foldables got those outside huge screens, which looked awesome. I think I have to go with the OnePlus Fold here. It really came out swinging. It had great hardware, some really cool software tricks. I mean, that multitasking mode was awesome. It wasn't their first foldable if you count the Oppo side, but... They did great. Let's see what he says. So I think in general, and I made a video talking about this already, but folding phones aren't quite on the doorstep yet. Like they're close, but they're still mostly thicker and more expensive than normal yeah. phones. But I do want to reward the ones There's that also are the pushing durability the boundaries concern. in some way towards that revolution. So winner for best foldable phone in 2023. Yeah, that's, that's the OnePlus open yeah man this phone one plus is open i good. called it the one plus when fold, i was thinking right? about what Oof. i would personally daily drive from the folding phones bunch this is the one that bubbled to the top this is the folding phone i would be most likely to use i think my favorite part is just the way you can move around multiple windows and keep them full size and have them overlap sort of the edge of the screen yeah. it's it's a fun and unique like the new multitasking new mode multitasking is really cool on a phone and it actually works so next award most improved most improved so the OnePlus 10T was Marquez's bust of 2022, so we'll probably give it to the OnePlus 11, which is a great phone, but I don't think it improved enough to earn it. Then again, I don't really know who I would give this award to. Maybe to Motorola? I mean, the 2022 Razer was fine, but it kinda lost the charm of the original Razer. It felt like they went after Samsung and kind of forgot about being unique. The Razer 40 Ultra with the massive outside screen that even goes around the cameras looks great. It still has caveats, but it's at least some competition for Samsung. The most improved award. Hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting because, again, lots of phones play it safe. Lots of phones are just a slight evolution phones from last year. are pretty much They're just the same phone. from year to year. And I can't get mad at that if they're already a good phone. Like... Zenfone, for example, I'm happy they kept a lot of things the same. But then that makes the most improved award a little more, um, a little more of a quirky pick. Maybe not the most obvious pick in the world. But I'm gonna go with the Nothing Phone 2. Oh, most okay. Most improved phone, 2023. So this is part That's a hardware cop story and part <laughs> the software story. So obviously they didn't change the hardware a ton from the first Nothing Phone. There's a slightly curved glass now to feel a little better in the hand. They went but generally from a mid range like phone a to a flagship phone. But they phone, also so did of course a lot it improved with the lot. software, specifically mm, moving I don't know to how Nothing I feel about OS 2.0 and then 2.5, which is now on Android 14, which gets a lot of but new that's stuff true. with this phone. They There's a focus a lot on efficiency in and smoothness and then adding all these features, and the results have been fantastic. So you combine that with the new specs, okay. the slightly bumped design, and I can see where he's coming features from. Features that unfortunately the phone one isn't getting. It just adds up to a pretty big improvement. Plus, you can send blue bubbles to. Oh wait, sorry, never mind. I can't do that. But <laughs> Oof. still, phone two, much improved. Damn, it's probably going to study out after this, and this was nice to put them on the map. But now they'll have to stabilize. All right, next okay. up, bust of the year. The award you don't re bust of the year. No phone was bad in my opinion. So I looked around over Marquez's year videos this year 
and there was one that stood out, the awesome OV1. It came from the Essential team, so the hype was up there, we wanted to see what was coming, but it just didn't pan out. It was expensive, they leaned into the crypto community to get support from Solana, it just didn't hit the mark. I'm pretty sure that's what it's gonna pick. I really want to have to give, but one of these phones on this desk is gonna win worst new phone of 2023. Look, yeah, and I, can I do see have the to phone preface right this there. basically every time by saying it right is actually hand. genuinely hard now to get a bad phone. But there was one bad phone this year. And so it's gonna win a trophy for it. <laughs> and that would be the Solana there Saga crypto phone. Buying this phone is like Hopefully they'll still share. make a second it phone. It might seem like a good idea for like two seconds, but the second you it actually wasn't that do it, you realize how horrible phone. of an idea it was. And this is just a bad phone. So that brings us to the biggest trophy of the night. It's the best one. It's the one you want to win. The MVP. Oof. The most valuable phone. Of the year. phone. I think I have to go with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I mean, it's just pushing the edge on a lot of fronts, from materials to camera, and it's just a really solid phone. The S23 Ultra is a really close second, especially when considering it came out in the start of the year. The iPhone came out in the second half, but yeah, the iPhone is just great, solid. The Pixel 8 is also a really good phone. The Pro is the only one with a thermometer, right? But it's just not on par with the others. The Pixel still has a lot going for it, especially software-wise, plus it's cheaper, at least in Europe. But yeah, no, the others are just better. Well, not actually valuable value wise, but it's it's really just my favorite phone of the year. My winner for MVP for phone of the year 2023 is going to the Pixel 8. What? Well deserved. No way. Big shout out to the Pixel 8. It has stepped it up over last year. I was so not expecting that. a bunch of things that. about this phone that are genuinely different from last year, but the headlining one, the one that matters the most is it's $100 more expensive than the Pixel 7, so it's really gotta deliver. I just can't give it to the Pixel 8. It's a really good phone. It has seven years of OS upgrades, which makes it a really good value. But man, I don't know, the Tensor G3 just is showing its age. They also created some artificial separation between the 8 and the 8 Pro in software. I'm talking about the Pro camera mode, which I don't really agree with. And at the price the Pixel 8 is coming out, I'm expecting to see some other features, some flagship features like the ultra wide band chip, which this doesn't have. It's a really solid phone. I mean, I have a Pixel and I probably would still get a Pixel if I were to get the phone now, but mm, I don't know. I don't think it's the MVP. Now I do have a runner up. I really, again, super loved this phone this year. It's the Asus Zenfone 10. Some of y'all already know because of what it did last year, how good these phones are. And it Never does it again the in this I weird physics-defying package of basically being nearly perfect. Small, compact, reachable, surprisingly back, good cameras. It just feels excellent like performance, it should be removable, good battery right? Life. Just, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about this phone. Zenfone 10. It's really removable good. Removable battery should make a comeback. And I'm also going to give an honorable mention I know it's tough, to iPhone it cool. 15 Pro, specifically for basically now feeling like we've reached peak iPhone. It just feels like a finished phone. It's a really solid phone. There's not a whole lot phone. of other things that I'm expecting to land with a bang on the iPhone. Two other quick mentions. I do have to give a shout out to the ultra boring S23, S23 ultra, ultra, just because this is that phone that is, it doesn't have any flaws. It's just a rock solid phone all around. And it consistently gets buried when you think about the December videos, the phone that came it's out 12 months ago, but I have to. This they were is a great really good phones. phone. And I want to give a shout out to the OnePlus Open for being the foldable phone. He really phone likes that the OnePlus Open. I think right? I could actually recommend to real people. Not that most people are going to spend eighteen hundred bucks on a foldable phone anyway. But if you're going still to, still go for, for one Z of Fold them. Five. If you have a problem with your foldable phone with Samsung, you can just go to one of their stores and get it fixed. With OnePlus, you have to talk to their customer support, send it in, wait like two three weeks to get your phone back, and you don't really know if everything's going to go correctly. Plus, Samsung has been doing it longer and they have better support for third-party apps. It's for different people, right? If you like living on edge, the OnePlus Open is probably for you. But if you just want to try a folding phone, the Z Fold 5 is the safe choice. This is the phone that I would daily if you had to tell me to pick a folding phone today. So shout out to the OnePlus Open. And uh, 
that's it. That's my smartphone awards for 2023. That's it. Let me know your opinions in the comments and I'll see you next year. Same time, different place. Bye.